I'm running a uh, stereo compressor mic, so it always will sound a little better going through that than what I hear. Because what I hear is a giant mud puddle. It's just muddy and crappy. And when I'm going chunk, 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 all I hear is bump, 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 bump. And it sounds, it sounds better when I use the uh, Frank. That's why I use it all the time. I'm, I love that guitar now. The sound, the tone, I'm used to the neck a lot more than I am even this. Even though this is a thinner, it's not a big fat Gibson neck. Like Ace's guitars, it's not like that at all so i like it a little better but it's still not what i'm used to is a strat neck i hate strats though i hate them but i had a strat neck put on a star body that was my first real guitar that i had made in 80 before i even really knew how to play so i learned everything on that guitar and i learned on a 78 strat neck so i just I, I love those necks. And the Eddie Van Halen models, the Stripe Series or whatever, are like his. They just write off. They don't do anything to the necks. They just put them on. So you've got, you know, uh, frets coming out. They'll just scratch the crap out of your fingers if you're not used to it. He's used to playing like this and not touching the frets or anything. And then he you know, found out that you could, you know, sand them down a little bit, but he still liked them, like, right out of the, you know, here's the neck. We haven't done anything to it. Put it on his guitar, and he used it. Just did that with the Kramers and everything. Not the Kramers that they sold, but his Kramer necks, and, you know. And they gave him tons of bodies painted, and he gave them out to all sorts of people. He can find them. They're worth ridiculous amounts of money. Not worth anything, really. Because you can buy the exact same body for 70 bucks. It's a Kramer Beretta special. Who cares? Well, I get it if you're like Rand or Randy. <laughs> Eddie. I like them both. I think they're both incredible guitar players. And they're both totally different. That's why I like them. And they're both very nice, actually. Everybody's like, oh, Brandy was such a nice guy. And blah, 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 blah. Eddie was mean. Eddie was being influenced by a lot of people, mainly Dave, who has got his way, well, he had money. Dave was a, you know, a millionaire, he came from a millionaire family, so to him, money was nothing. It was fame and the glory for Dave, Dave Lee Rock. So just making it was about more power, more girls, more everything. So money had nothing to do with it. But he was he knew what he was doing as far as business. Not everything, but you know, giving advice to Eddie and all that crap. But he gave some adv bad advice to Eddie and it hurt him and it, and it made Eddie come out looking like an idiot. And then of course he had his drinking. Uh, both both Eddie and Alex were drunk most of the time. It's not every single bit of the time I only met Eddie once sober and that was at the last show they played uh, when he got us tickets me and my mom my mom and I <laughs> when he put her on the list list because we met him at a Tom Jones concert and they bonded he called her mom and everything and so said he he'd be put her on every show that they ever played in LA area and he did up to the last show Sue Skews and plus one I was a plus one so every time we saw him he was drunk except for the last time and he was very quiet and he you know he's I think he was sitting down and he talked to my mom for like 10 minutes talking about Holland my mom's never been there she's her mom her mom's mom and so great-grandma was from there my great-grandmother was the neighbors was the neighbors of Van Halen so 
my great grandmother told this story. She had red hair, so they threw rocks at her because she was a witch. They thought in Holland because that's how progressive they are. The smoking pot ones, right? So after the Van Halens came and moved in next door, they started throwing rocks at both Jan Van Halen, the father, and the mother because she was dark from the islands. She was from the Dutch Indies. So they stopped throwing rocks at my great-grandmother and started throwing rocks at the Van Halens. And then eventually they both said, heck with it, we're going to America. And they both did. They both left within a year or two of each other. They both went through, you know, got to New York area. I don't remember where my great-grandmother stayed and where the Van Halens did, but they ended up out here, both of them. Everybody ends up out in California because the weather, the Hollywood, everything. So it's funny to me because they actually... The Van Halens didn't hate my great-grandma. My great-grandma, for some reason, had something against them. I don't know why, because they saved her butt from getting pelted with rocks. I never found out the reason she disliked them, but she wouldn't... She'd tell me, don't wear Van Halen shirts to, you know, Christmas or whatever thing she would be at. So, of course, I'd make sure and wear Van Halen shirts and necklace and everything else that I had. Just to get her all pissed off. And I didn't even find out why until my grandma told me. Her daughter. Who was born here. In Salt Lake. And then they moved down here. Or she moved down here. I don't remember. Oh no, yeah. So her mother and father moved down here. And she was born. Was she born here in Salt Lake? I can't remember. My great. I'm talking about my grandmother. Anyway, she never knew the Van Halens. Never knew nothing. But when she found out that the Van Halens lived here, like in Pasadena, and she, my great-grandmother lived in North Hollywood, that was too close, and she was pissed. I just wish I would have asked more, but I was, you know, 17, 18, 19, and then by the time I was a father then, and I was, boop, drinking constantly, so... Those things didn't it didn't occur to me to ever ask. And then I was off and running with the band, and I had no time because I was either playing, partying, or partying. So, yeah, my I think my grandmother passed away in 1990. She's almost 100. So, uh, 94 or 92 or 94. I know because I still have my long hair. Because uh, my grandmother asked us, which is the great thing, because she always said, so what if you can play guitar? You'll never make it. You'll never do anything with it. <laughs> Very negative, my great-grandmother. Don't know why. But the, you know, the thing is, is I played at her funeral. It was a graveside thing, and I played guitar and my friend sang. I think it was uh, How Great Thou Art or something like that, you know. And uh, at least when my mom passed away and at her service, we had the Elvis version sing, you know, playing of How Great Thou Art. That's cool. I'd rather have that than me and my friend, but whatever. Thing is, is I play guitar at her funeral. And all that, you know, stuff she said didn't mean anything in the end. But anyways, because... Guess what? But, uh, yeah, so anyways, what was I saying? Eddie, Eddie was cool, and I like Eddie. And Randy was very cool, and I like Randy. And to me, they're so different. There's not even a, you know, Randy would have been better than Eddie. Randy was totally different than Eddie. The, if anybody ever dared to even go, or even that. And people were doing that way before Van Halen even got on the scene. It was his whole thing of using the whole... He came up with a technique that nobody had... And actually played stuff. You know, melodies and, you know, classical sounding. There's nothing... He ever, never played a classical song. Everybody's like, he's playing Tchaikovsky or 
you know, whatever. I can't think of who. But everybody's always claiming, you know, he might, he, it might creep in because he was trained on classical piano. But he couldn't read and he couldn't write. He, he only, he could watch, memorize, and do it. And that's what he did with guitar. He'd go see every band. He even went and, you know, I don't care who believes it or not, he would go to Van, our Quiet Riot shows because he knew Randy taught guitar. And he knew he was going to go and see Randy play. He would see how he was fretting the chords, how he'd play, what he would play, what scales he would use. And he would learn. He wouldn't copy. He would learn. He learned from everybody. He watched everybody. And everybody did that. Everybody does that. I went down there and would, you know, look to see who's good. Who, I didn't like any guitar player on the strip that was playing when I was playing. The only guy that I liked was C.C. DeVille. And that's because when I went to sell him a guitar, I saw him sit down sober and pick up this warlock that I couldn't play for crap and he just started shredding on it. I'm like, dude, you're amazing. Because I hadn't seen him play yet, live. I was going to see him play that night or the next night. It was in June, I know, because school was getting out and they were doing schools out. And I'm like, dude, you're amazing. So then when I saw him play, he was good, but he was so busy swinging around and jumping and doing all the stuff and he was high. He had a big drug problem because he had money. His parents would, you know, everybody in Poison lived in a, you know, storefront, an abandoned storefront that they rented, and they all lived there, except for Cece. He had his own apartment because his, you know, his family would send him money. You know, here, we'll send you money so you don't have to be a bum and you can, you know, give this music thing a shot. And then he made it. And then when he, you know, blew it, you know, he he didn't hit the skids because he always had his family behind him. Then when he cleaned himself up, he got back into poison. And, you know, it's a, you know, <laughs> Brett Michaels is bald as, as, as I am. And Cece has hair down to here. But he needs it because he's a... He's <laughs> But CeCe's a nice guy, He's and he's the only guy that I ever actually watched, you know, like, I wish he would play better live, because the guy's really good. But I'd watch what he'd do, and i go, well, how's he, you know, I see what he's doing. I see how, but I actually sat, like I always said, I sat in front of Mick Mars for three years and watched him play. And sometimes he was playing, you know, chords like they should be played. Other times he was playing with one finger. And I'm like... <laughs> if he'd drop his slide when he was doing PCR action, he had to, you know, one finger then. But, but I was noticing he was... Uh, fingers you can get away with and so once I saw that you know that's how I played most of the time but uh, on stage and now I do it just because of the neuropathy thing talking too much gotta go I'm probably late I am late gotta go so it was nice talking to you